I'm in the city of Birmingham. My family don't know where I am today. My family were worried, even when I did this in Gloucester, they were worried about me getting beaten up, having my stuff stolen. But that was in one of the most small, calm cities in the country. Today, I'm in Birmingham. People have said that Birmingham is one of the most ruthless areas for people that have to sleep on the streets. The reason why I want to do this is quite important. Imagine what it would be like to wake up on the streets every single day in the cold with almost nothing and in constant fear of what could happen to you. I need to try and find a place to hide my sleeping bag. Carrying it around all day is a nightmare, but if it gets stolen, then I'm completely f***ed. So I need to find a good place for it. I'm potentially just gonna put it in like this bush. My concern is, it looks like it's ivy. I don't know what that plant is, but I, I'm sure. And my instincts are saying that that plant is like some kind of irritant plant. If I put my stuff there, I feel like it's gonna cause some kind of irritation. So this is the park. The issue with this park, I think, is that there's not a lot of bushes or anything like that. Part of me is thinking that I could put my sleeping bag in here. It's got a fence, it's got a padlock. It's unlikely someone would steal from there. But, National Grid, keep out. Danger of death. I don't really like the sound of that. So there's actually a random mattress just over there, but I think I would feel a bit paranoid like bed bugs and stuff, just sleeping on a random mattress. So I've just seen this hedge, and I'm just wondering whether whether I can just slide it in there. It's kind of well hidden. If I had like a piece of cardboard... Ooh. All right, I'll tell you what. See, there's a bin bag over there. I might take that bin bag and put it in front, just to kind of cover it. Hopefully no one will go through a bin bag. It's not a perfect plan. If someone wants to go through the bin bag to try and find some food, obviously they'll find my sleeping bag too. What do you think? Is it well hidden? I just have to hope that that's still there when I come back for it later. So I'm going to go into the city centre now and try and meet some people that are on the streets. Despite how much of a mess this city can be, I, there's something that I really like about Birmingham. I don't know. I think it's because the city that I grew up in was kind of messy. So it's kind of... Uh, it feels a bit like home. Is this for your university or...? No, no, so uh, basically it's like a documentary kind of like I want to show people what it's like to be to be homeless. Yeah. Um, so what was your name, mate? Kenny. Kenny, so where are you from, Kenny? I'm from Cumbria. So you're sleeping on the streets at the moment? Yeah. How's it been so far? It's alright. I think you keep yourself to yourself. Mm. People don't bother you. Plenty of food, so it's always plenty, th plenty to eat. That's good. How long have you been on the streets for? On and off, for about 20 years. 20 years, yeah. wow. 50, um, 51 now. You're happy on, on the streets? I'm, I'm happy, this is my choice. I've had plots and more stress than anything else. What do you find more stressful about like the houses compared to living on the streets? Like bills and like mental problems. It's hard, it's, it's hard for some people. It's easier being on the streets sometimes. You've lived in like different places, so you lived in like Manchester and all these places. Like, uh, when was like the hardest places to live? The hardest place to live is London. Why is that? It's not like what, what to make houses be, it's not. It's not? A lot of bullying down over that over that end. They make out that there's a lot of facilities over there, but th there's more here. So there's not many places in London where you can no. stay? Like, not many charities that would look no. after you? 
not. Have you ever found that there's been bad people when you're on the streets? Like, for oh, example, have you ever had stuff stolen from you? Oh, yeah, sleeping bag taken. Or you, 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 you had your sleeping bag taken? Yeah, your clothes taken. And, uh, yeah. I, I tend to do, I tend to, like, keep the main bundle of my stuff out the way. Okay, there's one sleeping bag with you. Through the day. So we're now in March, but we've just come through the winter. How do you find the winter? Two or three weeks. No, it was really bad. Yeah. What was that like? Hard. Hard. You've got to, got to be on your toes more than. Got to keep yourself warm like all the time, 24 hours a day. Hard work, yeah. When's the worst time for when it's cold? Between 4 and 6. 4 and 6 a.m., I'm yeah. guessing. It's always, that's always the worst time. Like. What can you do? Like, try and sleep through it? You just have to, you just have to get through it. Yeah. You just have, to, just have to get through it, like I said. It always, that, that, that's when you need that extra, you know, that extra stuff. Mm. You know, like an extra jacket and or an extra sleeping bag. I'm guessing, is it really hard to sleep through that time? Like, yeah, do you often yeah. just get woken up? Yeah. What was your toughest experience when you were on the streets? <laughs> Clowns like that. Some people that are not very respectful. Yeah, yeah, you get people like that. You can't help but open them up. So they say nasty things. Yeah, or give you some cheek. What sort of things uh, are, might they say? It depends what frame of mind they're in. You get a lot of people smoking drugs and that. So they would shout like drugs, like they would shout that at you. Even though you're not, they'll, they'll still say it. Do you do drugs or you don't? No, no, I just have a, no, no, I just have a beer. I like a you beer. have a beer every now and then? Yeah. But you don't do drugs? No, no, no. I think that's kind of understandable to have a beer every now and then. A lot of people that are not homeless will have a beer every now and yeah, then, so yeah. I don't think that's unreasonable. Were you ever tempted to do drugs? I don't do drugs when I was younger. Yeah. You know, but I'm getting older now. Yeah. I'm not as, not as fit and healthy as I used to be, so... Yeah. I think you said you're 15 now. 51. Uh, 51. Are you worried in like 20, 30 years if you're still on the streets? Is that Are you a bit worried about that? If I'm still in 20 years, I'll be shocked. One thing I have to respect about you is you, have, you seem to have such a positive positive attitude. Like you're, yeah. you're smiling, you, you know. There's no point sitting miserable. But if you sit miserable, you know what I mean? People yeah. around you is going to be miserable and... You know? Do you ever see like kindness on the streets? Do, do homeless people, do you ever find them looking after each other? Helping yeah, each other yeah that happens a lot. Does it? Yeah, it happens more than what you think. Really? Yeah. Well, why do you think that is? I don't know, you've got to help each other, haven't you? Mm. We're all in the same boat. Mm. You've, got look, you've got to look at... You've got to, you've, got to, you've got to watch each other's back. So let's say someone gave you some food, like lots of food, more than you needed. Do you think you would share it out? And give yeah, it some other? yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Lovely to meet you, Kenny. Yeah. Honestly, thank you so much for speaking to yeah, me. You're welcome. I want to talk about my plan for what I'm going to do with food today. My plan is to try and fast the whole time that I'm on the streets, which basically means I'm not going to eat any food. That is going to be really, really tough. If I fail, please forgive me, but check out this view. It's quite amazing. So this is the view from the balcony of the Birmingham Library, but some people are even higher. I know I'm a little bit off topic here, but library, uh, Birmingham has one of the coolest libraries, like, anywhere. because if it does start to rain, I don't have a plan. I've, I've never actually, so I've slept on the streets twice, but it's never, even though it's been very cold the times when I've done it, it's never been rainy. And if my sleeping bag ends up soaked, if my clothes end up soaked, I don't actually know what to do in that situation because that could get quite dangerous. I just bumped into two people. It was a man and a woman. She said, it's hard for women. And then she started, she started crying. 
and there was kind of like these marks on her face. I, I don't really know how to describe it. It was like a discoloration. Like I think it was like a, maybe like a bruise. And, and she started crying. Um, and yeah, it basically, she gave me the impression that like something had happened, violence or maybe something worse. It must be so hard. What was your name? Just so Jason. 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 Okay, nice. So nice to meet you, Jason. It sounded like you've been going through a bit of a tough time. I'm not Is having a good place. Been, uh, not in a I'm good not, place. Not in a good place. I'm on medication. Sorry. I'm homeless. I've had my sleeping bags taken. I was at Washington Court. It was making me hit ill. The food. I was actually vomiting. What do you mean by that? So you said you're at Washington Court. It's where they try and put the homeless as temporary accommodation. Yeah. I've got mental health problems uh, and it's just sent me right over the edge, but I was being sick because of the food. Almost like a homeless charity where they give food out, and but it was making you sick, is that The right? conditions of the rooms are filthy. Oh. Is it the council that provides that? Mate, I, my mm. mind is that gone. I don't, yeah. I, I can't focus. I don't I know understand. how I got it. I've got a chest infection, so I can't afford to get ill again. Yeah. So your chest infection, I mean, that must be really tough because we just come through winter. Oh. Operation, I'm panicking. It's hard to explain. Like the police, it's not their problem, but they send you up to feed Onido. But I've looked inside the sandwiches there. And yeah. there's actually mould in the sandwiches. What's okay. that about? How did you end up on the streets when and when did that happen? To be honest, I've been on them uh, uh, for months, just months. months, years maybe. I don't know because of my mental health. But I've had head, head injuries and a couple of overdoses a couple of years ago. And the head injuries, is that due to people being violent, was it? It was, yeah. It, I think was... I was in a tent and like one, I woke up and I think people have stamped on me and maybe a bat or something. My so legs were all so busted you, up. Really? Yeah, brother. I'm guessing if you didn't realise what was going on, were you, I guess, were you like high or drunk at the time, I guess, maybe? Uh, I self-medicate, but I wouldn't class it as high. Okay, so like medication just to help yeah, with your Yeah, yeah, I mean like people sort of paint a picture in, yeah, other people's heads that we're all out to get just high 24-7. Sure. So what would you say is the toughest thing? So you obviously you said you've been struggling recently. Uh, the last, we had four nights of rain and I've had my sleeping bag and my me, me bag's taken basically. So last, four I'm, nights of rain, I'm guessing it gets your clothes wet, it gets your bag yeah, wet. You get soaked through, I've got no socks because of it, they're all drenched. Yeah. So see it, look. Yeah. Not, not have, like previous had holes in the back and you know it's starting again look so I was thinking about this today because there's no way for you to get dry Plus, can I go off and get my meds yeah if are you, you gonna to be here meds. for a while um because I welcome yeah. a swatch but I need to yeah. calm down I yeah to... I understand if you need to yeah. brother please all right I'll come back if, if you're there give me t 10 minutes I'll be back give me 10 minutes yeah, okay, okay no problem Hopefully he's okay. Um, he's been through a bit of a tough time recently by the sound of it. Um, I also just want to be a bit cautious because there is a small possibility that, you know, he's rather than going to get meds, that he's gone to go and get some friends to take the camera or something. But, you know, he seems like a nice guy. I wouldn't assume that. I'd just have to be careful and think about these possibilities. I've just come out into the open a little bit. You can see how the difference that some people have had an okay experience on the streets and then others that are really, really struggling out here. Hopefully it gets better for him. Rain, the mental health issues at the same time, getting attacked, brutal. While I was waiting for the other man to come back, another man came and he was sort of hovering around me and it turns out that he was also homeless. Okay, so what was your name again, mate? Mark Myers. Mark Bayless, it's nice to meet you, Mark. So how long have you been on the streets for? Like six weeks now. How have you found it? Has it been terrible? <laughs> terrible. Terrible. It's fine. It's a way to sleep. What is it that makes it difficult to find a place to sleep? Not many people doing it. Oh, because so because there's so many people looking for a place to stay, they're taking all the good places. How did you end up on the streets? I, I lost it up. I lost the property. Just struggling to keep up with the payments. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you ended up on the streets. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. The winter just now. How was the winter for you? Terrible. Really tough. Yeah. 
What do you find the toughest bit about it? Well, it's like me when it's raining and find somewhere dry to sleep and things like that. Mm. Is that the toughest bit? Rain and cold. Mm. And have you seen any violence when you've been on the streets or has it mostly been okay on it's that side? When, when people drink. Yeah. When, when they drink, when they don't drink, that's when, you know. When people drink. So yeah, people yeah. are violent when right, they start right, drinking. drinking yeah, yeah. I just it, stay away from them. I've seen people fighting and people get arrested and fighting and things like that. Do people give enough money or food to, to get by or is it sometimes it's a real struggle with the struggle. amount? Real struggle to get enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to hear that, man. Are you, so you said the last couple of weeks you've been able yeah, to stay with your sister? sister yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's good to hear. But I guess you don't know if that, that, that won't necessarily last forever. No, no. I've got to find an Aston anyway. So, by the sound of it, you really don't want to be on the streets? No, 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 no. Because I think a lot of people assume that everyone that's on the streets is there by choice, but it sounds like it's not. No, no. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking yeah, time to speak to me. No problem, no problem. All right. Okay, so the, uh, the man that I was waiting for didn't... He hasn't come back yet, and people started hanging around near where I was. So I'm just going to go into a different area for a bit. Hopefully you guys don't consider this to be cheating, but basically my phone was down to one bar of battery. So I've gone to Starbucks to basically charge it. Um, obviously if I go to Starbucks, I had to get some something, I had to buy something, otherwise I can't just sit here. So I have got a sandwich thing. But unless I have a really good reason, I won't be eating anything else. Excuse me, I was just wondering, is there any way I could get the bottle to swill with tap water? Is that possible? Yeah. Thanks so much. Did it live? Yeah. Sorry. Thanks so much, appreciate it. One thing I have to be really careful with, the last gentleman I was speaking to, before I started recording, he said to me that he'd seen me walking around the city with my camera. And that's quite concerning because I was thinking Birmingham's such a big city, I don't have to be too careful with my camera. But if he's saying he's seen me around the city, that suggests he's seen me multiple times with the camera. Which means I have to be careful. Another thing that he said was, he said that it's really hard to find a place to sleep. Uh, so it's another thing that I'm going to have to start looking into soon. Those of you that have seen my previous vlog will know, I think cardboard's really important. Otherwise, sleeping on concrete is extremely uncomfortable. So, I need to come back for this later. What was your name? Becky. Becky, so uh, my name's Andrew. So you've got a sign with you today. What does your sign say? Sleep. When did you get out of hospital? This morning. So you've literally just come out. So what happens if you are unable to, to get to Tamworth, do you think you'd have to sleep out on, on the streets? Oh yeah, and I've got a heart murmur and that, so it's not exactly... Could the cold, I guess, be very bad for the heart murmur? Fatal. Could be fatal. Unless you can get to Tamworth, you, you, you potentially have, like, a risk of, like, a... Life yeah. Life-threatening. Have you ever slept on the streets before? I was sleeping on the streets before I went into hospital. Oh, was that in Birmingham? Uh, yeah. How did you find it? Horrible. It was in the winter as well, so it was absolutely freezing. Did it make it really hard to sleep? Yeah, and then uh, obviously the security come around uh, 5 o'clock in the morning getting your... Yeah, after all of that you're getting woken up early morning by security. Weekends are uh, even worse, you get all the males trying to, you know, be a bit um, full on with you. Is that people that are also homeless? It's just people that's around town a lot, you know, in the pubs and that. And they try and you. Does that happen to a lot of women that are on the streets? I'm so sorry about that. Has that kind of thing ever happened to you, kind of thing, where they've tried to do that? It's traumatising. It's traumatising. I, I won't get no help in Birmingham because I've got no local connections. Do you mind if I ask, how did you end up homeless originally? Failed relationship, abusive relationship for four years. I think the last time that I heard a story of a woman that was on the streets, it was really similar, it was an abusive relationship again, so it seems to be that that is a, a big cause of it. Did you 
go onto the streets to get away from that relationship. Okay. I'm on antibiotics and, I, and I've not managed to take any today. I've not eaten. It's just um, back to square one again. My mum's not in a financial position to help me get there. If you could get to Tamworth, is it your mum or your... My mum. So would she be able to look after you? You'd be able to stay with her? Yeah. How much did you say that you would need for... Right, so it's about three pounds from it in Tamworth to get up to my mum's and um, I think it's about about five, five pounds sixty or something like that over here for an all day ticket. Would she let you stay there long? I'd never stay there as long as I need to. She's terrified of losing me at the minute. So. Okay, so basically if you can get that money, that will get you off the streets. No, I need to. three buses all together. Two are the same, so the day pass is the same and then there's one up to my mum's. What's the total that you need to get back to your mum's? Nine pounds a month. I will have a quick look to see whether I can find some money. It sounds like it will make quite a big difference to you. I'm sorry that you've been through quite a lot of tough times recently. I'll be back shortly. Thank you. Ten pounds would be enough for for her to get home. I checked my bag. I've only got about five pound with me. I'm gonna get out a bit more money. There is of course a possibility that she made that story up, but hopefully she's telling the truth. If that story is fully true, I mean, just literally ten pound could save her life. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully this makes a difference, um, and it hopefully it yeah gets you back. And I just want to say best of luck and wish you all the best. Hopefully you don't end up on the streets again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All the best. Thank you, Don. So my hope is that I don't see her again because if I see her again and she's still begging, then basically no cameras. Okay. No. If I see her again still begging later in like let's say a few hours time then it suggests that she probably made it up because I mean if you need a bus to get back to your mum and that's the money that you need to get all the way back then once you have that money why would you carry on just begging you would just go back right, even if there's only a 5% chance that she was telling the truth that's 5% chance that that £10 could have made a massive difference to her. She has a heart murmur. Being on the streets for that one extra night could be lethal. There's a chance that it makes a difference to her. But I will let you know if I see her still begging. What was your name mate? Ben. And nice to meet you Ben. I'm Andrew by the way. Have you been on the streets long? Um, about months now. Do you mind telling your story about how you ended up on the streets? Because I was working zero out of contract agency oh, work. Okay. There's no consistency with my wages and then the housing benefit wasn't getting paid fully. And you were getting paid less than what you were supposed to by the government? Well yeah, the housing benefit was. I built up quite a few rents here. Got evicted from my flat. The HMO, you know, like the rent of the HMO is like £220 a week. So if I go into HMO, I'm better off on the dole. I want to be able to get a job in that. But you said if you're in a HMO, it's better to be on the dole. But what do you mean by that? If I'm in a HMO, the rent is £220 a week. Right? How's the benefit pay you? Yeah. If I got a job while I'm in a HMO, I wouldn't be able to afford to pay that rent. But I'd be better off on benefits because I'd get my housing benefit paid. You mentioned when you were younger you were going around from child place to child place? Yeah, uh, but all children's homes and foster care, so when things go wrong, like when I, I can do with a hand to help, no, I haven't got family to turn to, it's just me on my own. When you've had trouble, because you haven't had family that you can turn to, you've kind of been in a difficult spot. What have you found the hardest bit of being homeless was? The cold. The temperatures have really dropped like so. If people are generous on a particular day, do you sometimes get enough to get into a hostel to get off the street? Yeah, we need to move this place in the move, mate. You're right, there's like the bollards here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes we get enough to go to a hostel in Digworth. So it basically kind of depends how generous people were on that day. Like yeah. if people are generous, you yeah. get enough to to get a place. But if they're not generous enough that day, yeah. uh, uh, then then yeah. you'd basically sleep on the streets. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I'm guessing, so you've been on the streets a month. You've probably experienced like the rain. I'm just getting over the flu because last week when it rained, I got caught got caught in the rain and walking around in wet clothes. You know, it just. 
clothes. So. You probably end up wet for like a long time. Couple of days, man. especially with the cold wind as well. It makes it even colder. When you're wet with cold wind, it's you know it's really it's horrible. Do you have any advice? For other people that might be on the streets, for if it is wet and raining, try and stay under cover. Like, try not to get wet in the first place. I mean, like, obviously, no one can control the weather, but if, 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 if you check the weather forecast and if it's going to rain, yeah, just try and stay under cover. My last question was just, what are you hoping for? Like, what's your next steps where you're trying to go? I want to try and get a little bed sheet and get back into work, but I'd never work for an agency again, no, because I think. That's where it's all led from, yeah. Like not having consistency needs stability, you know. Thank you, Ben. See you soon. It still hasn't rained just yet, but that is the one thing that I'm the most paranoid about today. Because it's just so grey. I feel like it's gonna rain any second, but I felt that way for hours. One thing that I'm a little bit worried about is of all the places that I've seen today, I can't think of a single place that I think would be a good place to sleep. Most people will tell you to sleep in the shop fronts. But my thing is, there is a lot of violence on the streets. If you're in the shop fronts, any drunk idiot that passes by can beat you up. If you're not willing to sleep in the shop fronts, where can you sleep? So I was thinking about sleeping in the park that I was in earlier, but the problem with it is it's so open, there was nowhere that was hidden, which is what I need. I need somewhere that's hidden. I was just filming this place because I thought it looked really cool, but then I realized that the, the gate is open. It looks like kind of some kind of destroyed school, like they're demolishing or something. It could be a good place to sleep because I'm looking for a place that's out the way, that people don't go. As I'm walking around this place, it starts to feel really creepy. And then you hear like the, that thing, the flag flapping in the wind. This place really creeps me out. It's fucking... Why is there a chair? Right there. This place gives me a feeling of like... Like the chills, it gives me the chills. hear a sound like raindrops or just flapping it creeps me out and I'm like I need to get out of it I think I can hear voices I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of here this is, this is scary I'm not coming back here think about it there's probably a reason why this was open it's probably because people were coming here it's the kind of place where a gang could hide out so I'd, I, I want to stay way away from that also if you go inside there it probably there's a risk it could just fall down I mean it's part way through getting demolished So, Adam, do you mind if I ask about about your story? Yeah, I lived in Stevenage in Hertfordshire. Had a job, had a roof, had a life. Lost yeah. my job. Lost the job. 
collapsed at work, agency. Oh, Ended up in a hostel, couldn't afford to pay the hostel, which is £167 a week. You said you collapsed at work, how did that lead to kind of you losing? You lose your job, you ain't got the money. Wow, okay, so they, because you collapsed at work, they let you go from the yeah. job. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So you lost that job and then you were struggling to afford, like... I was close to get the place. I was a full-time temp. Yeah. I was actually six weeks away getting a full-time job with me. Did you like having a job? Yeah, I loved it. Well, this is my partner. All right. Hello. Yeah. Just doing a documentary. You can be in it if you... She's got a bipolar and everything. Okay. She gives us train tickets tell us to come up here. Okay, so this is the council that you're talking about, so... Council useless. There you go. Council useless. Yeah, they are. You've got these, like, hotels mm -hmm. running empty. Right? Yeah. Why can't he put us in there? Yeah. But no, they don't. But this is the really weird thing. So, obviously, collapsed at work, lost the job, but then... So the council, would, I guess, trying to house you, but then they moved you all the way up in Burma. Because we were living in a bin shed. In a bin shed? Yeah. The best night of sleep ever. I busted my leg. Alright. Oh, busted your leg, are you okay? Yeah, she's done a leg. What, how did it happen? Was this, did someone hurt you? Or is it no, just fell over? I can't it's remember. It's cold. Yeah, yeah we so walk, when you're we cold. We walk around here. My whole leg here is completely bruised. Up here, it's all scabbed up. My whole leg is bruised. We walk around oh, yeah. two or three o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting over there because I can't yeah. sit down and get back up. Yeah, I understand. But I'm over there, alright? I'm not being racist. Look at some of these problems. They get off, they get a place, they get everything. So, so this is something that I've heard quite a lot from people, is that uh, people that come in from abroad are getting places very quickly and then people that are on the streets are really struggling to get a place. You know what I mean? It's true. The one thing I was going to ask about is, so the council relocated you, which is quite strange. They moved you all the way up to Birmingham. But then, but then how did you go from that to being homeless? Because I guess they must have put you in a place. Yeah, they did. I hate my place, but it's full of druggies. Oh. I'm not a druggie. So then, did you feel like you had to leave? Well, it's not that like my partner's got bipolar anxiety. You got people shooting. You got people shooting up, pinning, doing drugs, robbing you. And they put you in a place full of drug addicts, and your your partner's got anxiety, bipolar. So you were like, we need to get out of this situation because it's a un really dangerous, unhealthy situation. You're safe from the streets. Just yeah. got to survive. I mean, she's lost a nan, a mum, and a nan last year, and she can't see. She can't get down to see Stevenage. Because it's like 100 or quid. Even though you, you're not from here, you're kind of trapped up here because it costs so much to get back down. Yeah. Everyone said, why don't you get a job? Or give me a place. When you're homeless, it's probably hard to get a job. I used to wake up in the morning and go, right, this is what I'm doing today. But here, when you're doing this, it's grand all day. Yeah. But I've had two quid today, so I bought me McDonald's, shared it with her. All day, that's the only amount of money you've had, two quid? Yeah, because you've got the police bugging you up. And you've got people, like the druggies are robbing people. I think people would assume that you would make so much more than that. Like, so you, across the whole day, two quid is, like, it's not very much. I will get it. 100%. Yeah, I'm trying oh, to get a push. Gonna... Yeah. Sometimes I get arrested just to keep warm. <laughs> yeah. What have you found to be, like, the hardest thing about being on the streets? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. So the streets is better? Well, I guess you said it's better than the drug places. Oh, cheers, thank you. Well, you work it out, yeah? But I can get hot chocolate. That's all that. Yeah. Right, get our chocolate, got a coke, we've had a Big Mac meal, got a yeah. bottle of water, got everything. That's my little food bag. See, where we sleep, we've got a mattress, we've got duvets, we've got everything there. I mean, Saturday's the best day for us. I guess in terms of people giving money. Yeah, yeah. But last Saturday, they worked because someone got stabbed up the top of the road. Yeah. Up there. Someone got stabbed on top of the road? Up there. Was that, was that a homeless yeah. person? Uh, no, no, he wasn't homeless. He was a bloke who just eats. You know, you go around at oh. your bike, delivery, up, someone's going to rob his bike and they stabbed him in the hands. And that was about six o'clock, six, seven o'clock at night. Is that quite a scary thing though when you're on the streets? If there is someone going around, for example, yeah. knifing people, there's not much you can do, right? If and you're on the streets. A homeless bloke, when he's begging, right, will always have his back against the wall. Oh, okay. Work it out. So he ain't coming from the so You can always see people coming. Yeah, you always watch. Everyone thinks you're watching see who's giving you money, but you're not. You're actually sitting there. Keep your wits about you. I mean, you got this cop called PC Owen. He doesn't like beggars. You don't like homeless. You don't like it full stop. He told me to go go back, go home, and go back where you come from. And I said, "What? You're paying for my train tickets, are you?" Mm. I mean, do you think I really want to be in Birmingham? I went, "No." Sometimes if it's pissing down, we hide. We don't come out when it's raining. 
Mm. You know, because it's not fair enough. Like, she's got chest infection. If it is raining, there's not much you can do, right? Because you do, you do not want to get wet. That's where you learn to save money. You got to save. Ah, oh, so you save money for when it rains, and then because you can't go out begging. Also, probably no one's going to give you money anyway because they're too busy trying. They do, even in the rain. If I sit here, people can see you. So they come here, they go quick, drop. Sometimes you, you just drop, drop money off. and then yeah. run off. I mean, it's about three weeks ago. We got uh, we spent a night in a hotel. Oh, nice. He's going to get us with you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, another one. Keep this is what I hear from a lot of people, is people are quite rude. Like, yeah. Spat out last year. Spat out? Yeah. It's life, isn't it? Take the rough bit of sweet. But you know, it's always watch. Yeah. See, I'm looking at you, but I'm not. I'm looking behind you. I, I'm quite paranoid now. I keep like, trying to look around, like, who's behind me? Uh, I just want to get a job from him. Get, off, like. get a job, yeah. yeah. No, I've still got 15 years. 15 years? Yeah, I've got 15 years inside me. Yeah, working. Okay, so... It's got quite dark now. And... I still haven't really sorted anything out to do with... where I'm going to sleep tonight. I really need to start looking. So I want to pick up the cardboard now because I've just gone past it. And I'm going to pick that up, take it back to where my sleeping bag is so it's all together and hope that my sleeping bag is still there. I really don't know what I'm going to do. If, if it's not there, that could be a real issue. I just put my phone down to, to film a walking shot and I realized afterwards that the, on the floor where I put it, where, which is down there, where I propped the phone up to, to film myself and I realized afterwards, I was like, wait, this area smells like, like piss and basically I think I put my phone in piss, unfortunately. I do have some bad news. Uh, the lady that the lady that I gave the ten pounds to, I did see her begging again, which makes me think she probably did lie to me because as, if you needed ten pounds to get back to your mum, and I give you ten pound, surely you go to your mum if she's going to take you off the street, especially if it's life or death. I didn't go back. I didn't question her. It is what it is. I promise you there is amazing people on the streets. There's always going to be good and bad people wherever you go. Keep giving, keep being kind to homeless people. It does make a difference and you will help genuine people. Most people on the streets are amazing, I promise you. But if I'm not honest to you about when people are potentially misleading, then you're not going to believe me when I tell you about people that are genuinely good people. Okay, um, so I'm about to find out whether the sleeping bag is where I left it. So I'm really hoping it is. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that head's just over there. That, oh, I'm tripping over. That is where the sleeping bag should be. So here we go. Yes, really good stuff, yeah. So I can see the sleeping bag under there, which is great news. I'm gonna leave the cardboard here and I'm gonna try and find a place to sleep. Behind me is a subway and this is, to be honest, this is the bit that I'm struggling with the most because I I feel really, I feel, I feel really hungry, but I've already had that one sandwich and I don't want to let you guys down, so I'm doing everything I can. Obviously, I've got my card, so it would be so easy just to walk in there and just buy something, but I really want to try try and beat this, try and not eat anything until, until tomorrow. It's starting to get cold and I don't like that because that 
reminds me of how horrible it was last time and it's only like 8 p.m. Step one. The thing is, if it's cold now, imagine how cold it's gonna be when I'm lying down completely still at 4 a.m. in the morning. So I could maybe sleep in this park. But the thing is about parks, I feel like this horror story is about people walking through parks late at night. A place I was thinking to check out, I like to stay in business parks. And the hedge where I put my sleeping bag is next to a business park. So I wanna have a look around. So this is it, I'm, I'm here by the way. I mean, I could sleep on there, but there's like the muddy, that's like mud. If I sleep here, it's fine, but it's very open. But, okay, here's an interesting one. Maybe. Let me show you with the camera torch. I think it's like uh, the air conditioning units or something. The issue with this place is there's no cameras. Wherever I sleep tonight, I'm putting my life a little bit on the line. I kind of want to stop walking around in these dark places because I, I just walked past two guys that were wearing hoods and there was something glistening in one of their hands. So I saw that, I was like And literally they walked right by me and I was just thinking, has he got a knife? Like, please, please do not stab me. Obviously he didn't, thankfully I'm still here and it could have been car keys for all I know. And maybe you can understand like when it's pitch black and people walk past you in their hoods, it is kind of scary. I don't even know where else to go, to be honest, because if I go towards the city centre, there's none of these car parks. <sighs> we'll get there. It's just uh, frustrating. I'm gonna try one more time, and if I can't find anything, I think I'm just gonna have to go back to that place. I thought I was kind of smart how I was approaching all of this stuff of sleeping on the streets. But today I'm realizing how stupid I am. <sighs> Again, I'm just checking out a new place, but it's very open. You can see it from the road. Um, yeah, I'm realizing how naive and risky this is. When you're walking around for hours in the middle of the night, you're doing something wrong. There is an argument for sleeping here, behind this. People are unlikely to see you from the main road. <sighs> Obviously the risk is if someone does come down here, you're way away from the road. No one's gonna hear you scream. Okay, I think I've decided what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna go back to that car park. The bin bag that I used to hide my sleeping bag. I'm gonna put that in the car park in front of me basically it's in the way so if a car just des decide to try and drive where i am they would have to drive over the bin bag i'm basically going to use that bin bag as a shield So that up there, you see in the red light, that's where the camera is. So then this is kind of where I was thinking to go. Okay, you got two problems. One is if a car tries to park here, I'm in trouble. Two is the camera can't actually see me from here. Let's give it a go. Just 
lay that out lengthwise. So you remember how I said I wanted to use the bin bag for something? Let me show you what I meant. If I put the bin bag here, it's like something that's in the way. So then if someone decides they want to park, they're like, okay, there's a bin bag. Don't park there. Don't I need more than just that bin bag though. What I was thinking is borrowing one of these bins. No one's gonna drive for a massive blue bin, right? <laughs> All right, let's get my sleeping bag. Ugh, smells a bit muddy, but I don't think it's damp. Right, so we now have a sleeping bag, a bin bag, and some cardboard. Even though I'm gonna put it back, I still feel a bit bad about borrowing their bin. So I would rather take something else, but I don't know what. Can you see that over there? Right there. At least no one's gonna to wanna to use a dead tire. this wheel all the way over here. There's literally a traffic cone just here. Look, for sake. Still, now I've moved this wheel, so I'm gonna use it. Oh, oh, oh. What I think I need to do is I need to go to that bus stop and see if I was standing there, would I be able to see me? Because if I would, then that's a risk. So, I mean, it's not very clear, but yeah, the answer is you can see it, which is kind of sh Actually, let's have a look at that bus timetable. If it's not running, that's a good thing. Monday to Friday, nothing after 12 a.m. until 5 a.m. It's not great, but I think it's the best situation I'm gonna find today. So I've been lying here watching that hedge over there but the thing that makes me like uneasy whenever anyone passed by that hedge their head is above the top there which means that they can see me hopefully it's okay I've been lying under here for a while and no one's disturbed me yet so I'm gonna do my best to go to sleep good night it's about 2am I've actually slept for a bit, which kind of surprised me, to be honest. My head is very dirty. So I don't think I've been sleeping on the cardboard. But I just thought about something, because just before I went to bed, I saw a fox, and it was going through a trash bag. And... I don't really want to attract a fox. A fox could have rabies. So I think I want to stop having a bin bag full of what could be food right at the end of my bed. So that's basically gotten back where I found it. Okay, now I think I can go to sleep again. It's not very busy while I'm sleeping, which is good. It was very busy early when I was trying to sleep at the start. Now it's quite quiet. I'll right, see you in a bit. Hopefully there will be no issues.
Mm. I need to get up. Well, that was very strange and a bit uncomfortable. I'm not sure if I'm being followed, so I'm just gonna... Okay, I thought, I thought he was following me, but I don't think he actually is. Okay, I wanna get out of here because... Basically, I mean, there was a woman there so she, so she arrived and she, I don't know, she was just asking lots of questions. She seemed, I don't know what the word is. She didn't seem happy, I say that. I don't necessarily blame her. I guess I didn't have a right to sleep there. But also at the same time, I don't think it's really harming anyone. If you're homeless, where can you sleep? But um, then well, the reason why I kind of really jumped out of the way is a car started to drive around and park into the space where I was. I don't know, I'm hoping that there wasn't, that they knew where I was and they were kind of parking there to push me out because it's kind of a, a dangerous way to push someone out. He or she, I don't know, because this was a different vehicle. Seemed to swing around the corner quite fast. You know, I don't know what the intentions were. I mean... I think this is one of the things that comes with, with being homeless, is a feeling of not necessarily belonging somewhere. And like if I was sleeping in front of a shop front, in the city centre, I probably would have got the exact same reaction. I just, I never really crossed my mind that I was doing something that would piss people off. A little bit scary when the car just whizzes around. Bloody heck. Hopefully, this video gave you a little bit of an insight into what it's like to sleep on the streets. I think the main things that I faced this time, one was the fear. The fear of like, okay, what's gonna happen? It is kind of scary. It is so exhausting doing, doing one of these, even just for a single day. So you can obviously, you can imagine what it's like for the people who have to do it every single day. I think it's interesting that only one person out of all of the people actually wanted to be on the streets. If you'd like to donate to an amazing homeless charity, there's a charity called Crisis, and I've linked them in the description, and they've helped well over a thousand people to get off the streets and to get into, you know, a better situation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have imagined how much disrespect there can be for people on the streets. It, it just, it, honestly, it's one thing that really surprises me. Yesterday, one gentleman saying that he was spat at, and I find it really strange because homeless people are people. There's, 
the same as anyone else. They're human beings. I don't understand why people treat them with such disrespect. It's frustrating. Please subscribe for more videos about important causes. One video that you really need to see is this video because in this video, it was the middle of winter. And as you can imagine, the struggles that people that go through on the streets in the middle of winter is a thousand times more difficult. You will hear about the stories of the people that struggled through the cold.